big moment was to come though wasn't it because gordon milne over at leicester was in for you yeah he they what i did is i wrote to a load of clubs saying my contract's up are you interested but they were desperately trying to get me to sign a deal then and um i had a phone call to, to just to say gordon milne's interested in meeting you and having a chat to you and then i went over and i and um, I, I remember driving over i can remember it was a really sunny day i went to hinkley to his house um his beautiful house chatted to me I had a good and then there's a guy called dave richardson who was the uh, reserve team coach and he was the one who gave me some advice when we played in the reserves against port vale he said stop stop trying to kick everybody and elbow everybody and play the game you've got loads of good attributes you can you can make a good living but you all you're interested in is hurting everybody because all, all my players are just always thinking oh god here he goes and so um he was the one that sort of got touch with and said look our gaffer wants to have a chat to you. So he took me to the ground, showed me around, and he said, right, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about it, and then give me a call. And I said, I, want, I said I've made my mind up, I want to come. This is where I want to go. Gary Lineker, Alan Smith, Steve Linex, Martin O'Neill, um, Mark Wallington, Paul Ramsey, um, bloody, um, Andy Peak. I mean, they had a good team. They had a really good team. So he goes right so sleep on it and then let me know so when i got home john rudge came up to my house and knocked on the door and he said right i've got to ask you can you sign this will you sign this deal blah 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 blah. i said no john I, I, i've made my mind up I'm, I'm gonna leave and um he said right howard wilkinson wants to speak to you at sheffield wednesday i said i've made my mind up i'm going to leicester and he said right in football it's polite to go and speak to those clubs that want to sign you it just holds you in good stead for the future and he said, if, he said, if I were you, I'd go across and speak to Howard Wilkinson. And I said, OK. So I phoned Howard Wilkinson and he said, son, I'll see you tomorrow, 10 o'clock. So I drove over early. I was there about nine. And then about half nine, I got to the stadium. And I thought, oh, I might as well. So I, knocked, so I went into the secretary's office and I thought, I'll come see the manager. The guy called Stuart Eustace. Stuart, Stuart Eustace? Yeah, Eustace. Mm. Yeah. So he's assistant, right? So... Bearing in mind, I'd only ever been to talks the day before to Leicester. So he said to me, how are you doing, son? I said, yeah, good. He goes, um, do you think you're quick? I said, yeah, I'm all right. He said, you've got a good touch? Yeah, yeah. Can you use both feet? Yeah. Can you head? Yeah. Here you are. Come with me. Took me to the, to, the, to the kit manager. Got me some kit. What size boots you take? I think it might have been Imri Verardi's boots. It might have been. So gave me a pair of boots. Drove up to the training ground. The kids were at the training ground painting fences. <laughs> he, 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 took, he got a bag of balls out the back of the car, said to me, run around and get warmed up. Now imagine this, right? I'm thinking, this must be, obviously different clubs do it differently. So I ran around, had a little warm up. The kids started to cross balls from the left and right. I started to head them in, volleys, sprints. So we did about 20 minutes. And um, so he said to me, oh, good stuff, good stuff. So we came back in the car to the, to the ground. I went and had a shower and then... Ma the manager was seeing Mal Sterling over a new contract. So anyway, Mal Sterling left. He didn't know who I was. He just nodded. And then the manager went, all right, son, come on in. And when I come in, he goes, you okay? I said, yeah. He goes, you're sweating. I goes, yeah. I've just been doing the other part of the, um, <laughs> the, the, the talk. And he went, what do you mean, the other part? I said, oh, the coach took me up to the training ground and crossed some balls for me and did some heading and shooting and sprinting against the, the kids. He went, who did? I said, the guy who was outside with me. He said, wait here. So he obviously went outside and said, to him, what on earth are you doing? You know, he came back and he goes, I'm sorry about that. I was sweating. It was dripping off me. I had, a, I had like a, a napkin and a cup of tea. So we had a good chat, walked around the stadium. And he just said to me, he said, um, so I'm not going to ask you anything. I'm not going to talk about money because I don't want to talk about money. I want you to say to me, I want to come here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you sleep on it. Don't tell me now. Can you call me tomorrow at nine o'clock and tell me what, what your decision is? I said, yes. So he said, thanks for coming over. Try to give me some money for my petrol. And I said, no, Leon, it's my honor. Thank you very much. And then, then I went back and said to my brother, I've got to, I've got a phone in tomorrow and tell him I don't want to go there. He said, yeah, but you've got to do this. This is what you've got to do. And I said, I said, I, I liked it, but I've made my mind up. I, I promised Gordon Milne and I don't want to go back on my word. So um, I phoned um, Howard the next day at like nine o'clock. Secretary put me through. He goes, morning, son. How are you? Yes, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good, good, good. Have you had a sleep? Have you had a think about it? Yes, I have. Now, tell me what you're thinking. I said, 
Mr. Wilkinson, I promised Gordon Mill at Leicester that I was going to sign for them. They, they'd been in touch with me for, for longer and I've been down a couple of times and I promised him I'd sign for them. I don't want to go back on my word. I, re- I was really impressed with the stadium and everything, but I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my word. I'm going to, to Leicester. He said, do you know what, son? Thanks for your honesty. Thank you for calling me back and being prompt on time. Thank you for coming up yesterday. You never know what football's like. He, he said, I might end up signing you sometime in the future. Good luck with your career, son. Thank you. I said, oh, thank you very much. And I, I put the phone down going, oh, my God, thank God for that. And um, little did you know, I end up going to Hillsborough anyway. I'm sitting next to him at dinners, you know, when we have the dinners and, and, yeah, and yeah. talking about the, the, the nostalgia and how I nearly signed but didn't, but ended up going there anyway. You get you go to Leicester and uh, you're on three hundred pounds a week, hundred and fifty appearance money, and then you get this uh, ten thousand pound signing on fee. I mean, wh- on fee. I mean, how did you how did you feel? I mean, did you do anything uh, oh, completely outrageous? Yeah. Go out and buy a car, or what did you do? Because you like I a was, car. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> I've, so I've signed. There's no agents, there's nothing. You, sat, you go across there, everything's printed out, what he promised you. Da, 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 da. The, the secretary explains to you, this is this, this is 10,000 signed on for, you'll get 3,300 pounds in three different installments, on th- you know, once a year. And I, I, obviously I've never had any money because you, you don't have a bank account because we had, had a bank account, but it was like a building society thing. Because yeah, with got, the book. We got, paid, <laughs> we got paid cash. We had an envelope, you know, a port veil, <laughs> and just got an envelope at the end of every week. So, and if the gold bonus was in there or what was in there, it was in there. So, um, so yes, I stopped on the way back on this country road and I got the phone and I phoned my brother's work and um, I just said, it's Phil then. They said, yeah, we got him out there. He was in the workshop and he said, he said, how did it go? I said, I've signed. He goes, oh, well done. I said, Phil, £300 a week, £150 appearance and £10,000. He goes, no way. I said, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. So we cried on the phone. I put the phone down and I drove. And I, 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 honest to God, was driving along thinking, this is it. I have £300 a week, £10,000 signing on, £150 appearance. I've, I've cracked it. I've absolutely cracked it. This is it now. If I can get, if I can score some goals, I might get a better deal. I might go to £500 or £600 a week. Um, you've got to remember our rent then was like twenty pound and twenty pound a week, eighty pound a month. So I just thought that my, you know I'll be able to help my brother and everything. And so when I, so yes, you, when I when I got there, I asked them. They said to me, "What we'll do is we'll supply you with a car for um, for the first season, and then you know when you're settled and everything, you can get yourself a car." So I've got a sponsored car as well, like a Volvo. So. During that period, one of the guys who was a big fan of the club, he he, he ran a, a like a, a Vauxhall garage, and he said, "Right, I'm going to do all, do all these cars at discounted prices." And I phoned my brother. He said, "Take it, take the car," because he worked in, in the car industry. And I had a I had a um, an Opal Manta, I think it was, like a white one <laughs> yeah. with a fairing on the back and a, like like big wide wheels and everything. I honestly, Tim, I thought this is it. I've arrived. I've arrived. Beautiful white car, and like first one in our family to have a new car. 